So first I'm going in with Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow in Dark Brown and I'm just taking it on an angled brush, this is an unbranded brush but it's sharp and it creates nice sharp lines for the brow and I'm just brushing it through the brow to create hair like strokes. So just mimicking the brow hairs, pushing the product into the brows. And obviously the tail of the brow should be darker than the front so I'm applying it more sparsely at the front and thicker at the tail. Creating a nice shape to the brows that she's already got. So she's got a really nice shape with brow Amelia so I'm literally going in and just rounding it off and sharpening the end of it. You can create this look with powders, eyeshadows, pencils but I prefer to use a pomade because of the consistency. But as you can see on my hand, I've got it on my hand. Um, because if you put it on the back of your hand, it just warms the product and makes it easier to use. And then also I practice the strokes on my hand to make sure there's enough product on my brush. And this is a really good tip to make sure that you don't go in too full on and end up applying too much product to the brow because then it just becomes a bit messy. So again I'm going in with my favourite product like I always do, Max Light Cover Up in NW15 and the reason I use this shade is because it's so white and so light, like we're not trying to match skin tone here, I use this on everyone, it's because it's a good base and the lightness of the colour allows pigmentation from eyeshadows so you, all your eyeshadows really show up nicely. And I firstly underline a brow with it so we get a nice sharp brow right down to the tail and then I begin to apply it all over the eye. So with this product, you really need to work it properly. You need to set it with your brush. So if you use a big brush like I'm using, a flat brush with synthetic fibers, it will set the product properly. So as you can see, I just keep patting it, patting it, dragging it down, adding more product and keep patting it in. This will set your product and it will make it a really good base for eyeshadows. And just over the top of that, I'm buffing in this Peaches and Cream Pigment Glitter Base. And it's just because it's got a velvety texture and it just adds that extra grip to the Select to really hold on to your eyeshadows and make them really vivid and bright. So I'm going in with my first colour, which is this yellow colour from the Zoeva Matte Spectrum Palette. And as we're doing a cut crease, the shaping needs to be different. So as you can see, I'm kind of dragging the pigment more out towards the brow. So it's more of an elongated shape. And I'm literally just buffing it right up to the like, eyebrow, into the highlight. You don't want it too close to the brow, but you do want it nicely blended with a gradient. And keep buffing it out until there's no edges and it's nice and seamless. But you want to keep adding pigment in to keep the colour bright and not too faded. And I'm just adding highlight into the brow bone and inner corner. You can do this at any stage, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going in with my second colour now, blending it into the previous. And I'm using a smaller brush because we want to cover less surface area. So make sure it's below the last colour because you still want to be able to see the yellow but you want the orange to be blended really nicely into it. So I just keep buffing it into that shape, adding more colour because you want to keep it pigmented but blended. So the edges need to be blended but then you need to add more eyeshadow into the mix to make it more pigmented. You want that colour to pop and the orange blends really nice into this yellow and especially with this brush if you're going to use any brush I'd recommend this brush it's perfect it's 
by the weaver. And to maintain that yellow brightness, I'm just going back in with the yellow, buffing out the edges of the orange and adding the yellow pigment back into the cloak. So again this is our third eyeshadow blend now and I'm using the same brush as previously because it's small and can get into the crease of her eye and I really need to build this product so I'm adding quite a lot of the product onto the lid before blending it and then I'm literally buffing the edges ever so slightly because if you buff it out too much you are going to lose your previous orange and yellow. You want to maintain all the colours and again I'm applying this slightly lower than the previous shade because we want to keep all those other colours so I'm just adding products and then buffing the edges and the important thing to mention with cut creases is to take it slightly higher than you normally would because if you imagine that the whole lid is cut out you still want to be able to see all that hard work that you've done with your blending so you're taking it slightly higher than the crease slightly higher than normal because we are cutting all that crease out and we still want to be able to see the colour And for our fourth and last blend, I'm taking this cola colour and it's really nice, like warm brown. And I'm just adding that slightly lower than the red because I don't want this look to be too bright, but I do want some colour in there. So this uh, brown colour just dulls it down slightly. So I'm really adding that into the crease area and darkening the look. Makes it more intense when you do cut the crease. So as you can see, the eyeshadow has followed the curves of the crease and I'm now going to cut that out. I'm using this brush and select cover up because select cover up is thick enough to cover over dark eyeshadows. This brush is perfect, if you need to use a good concealer brush when cutting out creases because it needs to be rounded because if you get little bristles that are out of place it can cause little dots on the eye that you don't want so this brush I'm literally using the shape of the brush to my advantage I'm placing it down and dragging the product across and as you can see you get really nice curvature you get really nice lines and that's what we want we want it to look very fluid we don't want it to look sharp and angled we want it really nice and fluid and you really do need to spend a bit of time doing this to make sure it's right And how big you want to cut the crease really depends on the eye shape. Some people overcut the crease so that you can see it when it's open, but Amelia's lids are nice and big, so I've just cut it to her natural crease line. And make sure you don't cut it too high so that you're not cutting out all that hard work blending that you've just done. You still want to see the shadows behind it. So now I'm just setting it with the Mask Set eyeshadow and to get the best from this, to get the best product payout from this eyeshadow I like to just scratch the pan a little bit so it becomes a loose pigment and then pat it on like that. You really do need to work with it because it's white, to get it a nice bright white you need to keep patting and patting it on but once you've patted the white eyeshadow on it will set the concealer also. So it's a really nice eyeshadow this as well so I've patted it everywhere and then we're going to cover it with a pigment next. So I literally use Peaches and Cream Glitter Base and their Print Pigment and I patted that over the white pigment that I just applied with a flat synthetic brush. So my camera died whilst I was doing eyeliner but I literally just did a winged eyeliner and I'm cleaning the fallout from underneath the face. And just to sharpen that wing, we really want it to sharp, I'm using Select Cover Up Concealer to underline it. So to get our under eye nice we need a base, I'm using this Maybelline base under eye concealer and this is one of my favourite concealers. I'm literally just buffing that underneath and also buffing out that select that we just put on. I'm using Maybelline gel eyeliner on this Morphe brush and I'm putting it on a waterline and Obviously, if she's blinking, just gotta bear with her and be slow. 
and now I'm just buffing the eyeliner underneath the eye with some brown eyeshadow and then I'm just going to go in with a black eyeshadow to blend out the waterline. And now I'm just using the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in shade 10 to buff under her eyes and just buff into that eyeshadow. And this makes it easier when you're applying foundation later on because you've already done the hard work buffing into the eyeshadow. So now I'm just applying this foundation all over with a flat synthetic brush. The reason I do this is because when you go straight in with a buffer brush, you are losing a lot of product in the bristles. With a flat brush, you can spread it evenly all over the face. And then obviously I go in with the buffing brush later on to buff the product in and make it flawless and even. This foundation, I must say, is slowly but surely becoming one of my all-time absolute favourites. The coverage is buildable, it's immense, high coverage, and the uh, warm tone foundations, which I really like. So I'm just going around the eyebrows with that brush to make a nice straight line, and then slowly buffing out the foundation. If you keep patting the foundation, it actually sets without a powder, which is another thing I really like about this foundation. And as you've already done the hard work blending the concealer under your eyes into your eyeshadow, you can now easily just blend that into your foundation. Now I'm just going in with a bronzer to contour her cheeks and give the face some definition. I'm using the 3 method it's called and I saw this on Kim Kardashian's video and it's where you make the number 3 shape on your, so you do your forehead, into your cheek and then under your chin and it creates a 3 shape. And using a big fluffy brush I'm applying the highlighter onto the apples of her cheeks, I'm using it on her nose, forehead, bridge in between her eyebrows, cupid's bow, I'm highlighting all them places so whichever angle you have your head at you are glowing. And I'm now just going in lining Amelia's lips using slow back and forward motions and lining her natural shape of her lips. You can overline, but I prefer just to follow the natural shape. I do find when applying makeup on somebody else that it's easier to use a lip liner because then when you add lipstick later on, you've already got like an outline, like a guideline to follow. And now I'm literally just using a little detailing lip brush to add the lipstick onto Amelia's lips. And then I'm just adding a bit of gloss because it is Christmas, who doesn't love a little glossy lip at Christmas time? And that does conclude this tutorial, so I do hope you like the look and show me any recreations that you do. And obviously thanks for watching.